it's Sharon. Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is part of a video hop called Save the Crafty YouTuber. It's a collaboration between a group of card makers who've got together to support each other and hopefully along the way introduce you to lots of new inspiration. Please check out the other videos that are on this hop. I'll put all the details in the description box below on YouTube. All you need to do is watch as many of the videos as you can, l leave a comment, like the video and consider subscribing. When leaving a comment, please um, state if you are in the USA or international because some of the prizes um, are restricted to whichever country they're being sent from. So um, make sure you mention that. There are tons of prizes on offer from lots of generous sponsors. You don't have to comment on all the videos. There are a lot of videos in this hop. Um, but obviously, the more you comment on, the more chance you have of winning. But check out all the details in the description box on YouTube. You'll find everything there. And there's so much inspiration. So I'd really encourage you to, to watch as many videos as you can. Right. So let's make a start with the card for today. We're going to start by creating a wood green background. And I've got this 3D embossing folder. Um, it's the 3D Texture Fades embossing folder by Tim Holtz for Sizzix. The card I'm using is watercolour card, and as you can see, I've spritzed it with water before putting it in the folder. These folders are a little bit different than the, your usual embossing folder. They're, they're a bit thicker. I'm using a big shot, but depending on what die cutting machine you use, you will basically need whatever kind of platform you would normally use for embossing folders, but you only need one of the cutting plates. You'd normally sandwich it between two. And they do recommend that you run this back and forth three times just to give it a really good impression because it's so thick. And you can see that's absolutely so much depth and detail. And the finished effect I want to create for this wood grain is kind of a whitewash type look. So I'm going to create a bit of a sort of bluey green background and this is iced spruce distress oxide. And I'm basically just water colouring it on. I've just spritzed a bit of water onto it and I'm roughly brushing it on. Don't be too heavy handed with this because you do want some of the white to show through because that will give that kind of whitewash look. So you, you do want to have a little bit of white still left. And once that's done, I'm just going to clean up my workspace quickly because otherwise I'm bound to put my arm in it. <laughs> and you do need to dry off your card at this point before we move on to the next step. So I've just grabbed my heat tool and I'm just giving it a quick blast. And once that's dry, the next step is to add some Distress Crayon over the top. And I'm using Gathered Twigs um, for this particular one. The good thing about the distressed crayons is the actual um, the bottom of the crayon is flat. So as you rub it over this embossed surface, it, it only kind of picks up the, the raised areas. So you keep that blue, bluey green underneath still shows through. You do have to be careful not to be too heavy handed. And then what I'm doing is I'm just dipping my finger into some water and rubbing it around and that sort of... Um, distributes the the colour nicely. And you can see I'm not being too careful here because I do want the colours underneath to show through so I don't want too much of this brown. So you just need to scribble it over and then just um, move it around a little bit with your fingers. It's a really quick and easy technique but the, the end result is really realistic looking particularly with this this folder that's that's got more you know it's got more layers than a normal embossing folder so you really really do get some dimension i'm just going to give that a quick dry and then we can put that aside to dry completely while we get the rest of the card ready And I'm using a die set from Sizzix Lifestyle in the UK, which is the Pretty Wreath die set by Peach Hughes. And it's got a lovely wreath with some flowers and little berries and bits to go on it. And this is the wreath. And I'm going to cut this three times. Um, I want to layer it up a bit. So I've got some, I think this is basil cardstock. This is called Peanut Cluster, this particular colour. 
and I'm going to layer it. So I'm going to have a couple of um, brown layers and then I've also die cut off camera. I've um, cut it from an aqua colour as well. These are the little berry pieces. And I think I'm probably going to need three of these, but I'll cut four just while I'm at it. There's two different styles, so I'll just cut a couple of each, pop those to one side. And then these are the flowers and I've got um, a very pale pink. I think this is also a basil card from memory. I think it's called Pale Rose. And I'm going to do a couple of sets of these. There are three different sizes that I've picked and I'll do a couple of couple of sets of those. So I've got all the elements ready and the first thing I need to do is to, for the little berry pieces, I'm going to add some Nuvo, Tonic Nuvo drops to create little white berries on that brown card and I'm going to do that first because these need a little while to dry. I'm just going to test it on a piece of scrap paper because sometimes if you get air trapped in the nozzle of these drops, you can get a great big splurge and you can very easily ruin your project. So I would recommend trying it on a bit of scrap paper first. And you can see they make really realistic little berries. And you can alter the size depending on how hard you squeeze. So I'm just going to pop berries on all of these. And then these are, they usually take about an hour or so to be dry enough to, to use. So I can just put those to one side. You can see I've just gone off the edge there. So I'll pop those to one side and then I can put the rest of the card together. And for the flowers, I'm going to add just a bit of distress ink around the edges. So that they've got a little bit of variety and a bit of dimension. And I've got, uh, this is frayed burlap that I'm adding with the distress tool. So I'll go around all of them. They're a little bit fiddly. But I'll just ink all of them and then we're going to shape them. So I'm using um, a paper sculpting kit here. I'll put all the details of, of all the products I'm using in the description box on YouTube. But I've basically got a soft mat and a ball tool. And what I'm doing is I'm running the ball tool over the petals with the flower face down. And then I'm flipping it over and just pressing into the centre. This gives the petals a nice sort of outward curve. And of course, when they're layered together and then put onto the wreath, it, it gives a lot of dimension, actually. And this only takes a couple of seconds, but it really does make a big difference to the finished flowers and the finished look. I'll just do, quickly do these last couple of small petals. And then I can start to assemble these. So I've got one, what will essentially be one larger flower and then two smaller either side just I think that gives quite a nice arrangement once it's on the wreath so that's the larger one and I'm just using um, Cosmic Shimmer PVA glue to put these together so that's the larger flower and then for the smaller flowers I've, I've got two of these medium kind of size flowers and then two of the smallest So that's those done. Um, off camera, I did add some Tonic Nuvo drops to the centre of the flowers, but my video wasn't recording. Um, the colour I've used is Bubblegum. Um, I'll just show you the bottle. There you go. And those have already dried. So now I can start putting everything together. So I've got... Um, this is the wood green... Wood green? Wood grain piece and I'm using double-sided tape so I'm just fiddling around here trying to get rid of that light showing on my mat but uh, it's just impossible so I think I'm gonna have to invest in a new lamp for using with this glass mat <laughs> so I'm using double-sided tape to 
attach this to my card front. You do want to use quite a bit of tape because this um, panel obviously has been heated a couple of times with the heat tool so it's a little bit warped. And this is how I line up my card piece. You can see there's a tiny white bit showing on the right hand side. I'll just um, trim that off once I've finished the card. But it's lined up pretty well. And I'm just giving it a good firm rub down because it is a little bit warped. So I've got my three wreath layers. And what I'm going to do is just attach these again with PVA glue. And I'll offset them as I stick them down just so that they're not kind of straight on top of each other. I think it just makes the wreath part look a bit more interesting and, and thicker really. So that's the first one. And then I'll add the aqua one on top of that and then the, the second brown layer on top of that. So now I can add the flowers. So I'm just working out exactly where to place those before I add the berries because I kind of need to know how much of the wreath they're going to take up. And again, I'm just using PVA glue, Cosmic Shimmer glue. These little berry twigs are, are very clever actually because they're slightly curved so you, it's very easy to sort of follow the line of the wreath. And I'm just evenly spacing these out and you can see now they're on the wreath that adding those white Nuvo drops really makes those berries pop and ma makes those stand out. They'd probably get a bit lost on the wreath without the berries. And I'm adding quite a generous amount of glue to the bottom of these flowers because obviously I'm not sticking them onto a flat surface. So I need to make sure there's enough glue for them to stick onto the layers of that wreath. So that's my wreath set up. And now I'm ready to add... I want to add um, some birthday greetings. So I've grabbed this Sizzix Phrases Happy and Pineapple die set because it has a really nice birthday die. And I've die cut that from some rose gold... Um, it's kind of got a brushed um, effect, so it's quite subtle. And the, there was a happy in that as well, but it was just a bit too big. It would have kind of overshadowed the wreath. So what I've done is I've grabbed a stamp set. This is the Simon Says Stamp Birthday Celebration set. And in that set, there's a little stamp that says wishes to you. So I thought that would work quite well with the birthday die. So I've just stamped that onto some grey card. I didn't want to use black. I thought it would be a bit a bit too dramatic and, and take away from the rest of the card, really. So I've gone for grey and I've just heat embossed that with white powder. The powder I'm using is Wow um, Bright White and it's a super fine one, which I use for all my sentiments. So I can just take that off to my paper trimmer and trim that down. Sorry about my camera wobbling there. <laughs> I obviously knocked it as I was going to the trimmer. And I've just cut that into a little strip and I can work out now how to put this together. I've just got to be a little bit careful because the Y drops down. I want them quite close together, but I obviously need to make sure I don't block any of the wording with the Y. So I'm just going to put some dots of glue all over the back of this. And then I can work out the placement. It's tricky to, I don't want it too central. And I'm debating whether to lift up that sentiment and then it's too far stuck. So I'm just going to have to move the birthday up a little bit. That's it, perfect. And that's the card finished. I think the finished look is really quite pretty. Don't forget um, to pop and see all the other videos on this hop and of course leave comments and like the videos to, to be in with a chance of winning some of those amazing prizes. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd be really grateful if you'd aren't a subscriber if you, if you could subscribe to my channel and I hope if you're popping along to see lots of other videos on this hop that you find lots of new inspiration, hopefully some new channels that you can subscribe to too. 
Thanks again and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye.